Hi, I'm Bob. Let's learn Chapter 12, Pricing and Advertising. After learning this chapter, you will be able to answer the questions, such as why some computer firms charge a lower price to students, and why some textbooks are sold at different prices in different countries. Different firms use different pricing strategies. Some firms charge different prices to different groups of customers. Some stores require that customers buy an annual membership to be able to buy goods at a relatively low prices. In last chapter, we know that a monopoly maximizes its profit when it uses uniform pricing, charging the same price for every unit sold to every customer. In this chapter, we show that a monopoly can increase its profits if it can use non-uniform pricing. That is, a firm charges different groups of customers different prices for the same product, or charges a single customer a price that depends on the number of units the customer buys. The most common form of non-uniform pricing is price discrimination charging customers different prices for the same good based on individual characteristics of customers. Membership in an identifiable subgroup of customers or on the quantity purchased by the customers. Not all firms can price discriminate. For a firm to price discriminate successfully, three conditions must be met. First, a firm must have market power. Otherwise, it cannot charge any customers more than the competitive price. Second, the firm must be able to identify which customers are willing to pay relatively more, which means it should know the customer's reservation price. Third, a firm must be able to prevent resell from the customers that the firm charges a relatively low price to those whom the firm wants to charge a relatively high price. Not all the price differences are price discrimination. If the price differential reflects an actual cost differential, then the price differences are not a price discrimination. There are three types of price discrimination. The first type is called a perfect price discrimination. It's also called a first degree price discrimination. The firm sells each unit at the maximum amount each customer is willing to pay. It captures all the potential consumer surplus. But the perfect price discrimination is rare because firms do not have perfect information about their customers. Perfect price discrimination is efficient. It maximizes the sum of consumer surplus and producer surplus. Therefore, both perfect competition and perfect price discrimination maximize welfare. However, with perfect price discrimination, the entire surplus goes to the firm, whereas the surplus is shared under competition. We can derive the consumer surplus, the producer surplus, and the deadly loss under perfect competition, monopoly, uniform pricing, and perfect price discrimination. Firms that cannot perfectly price discriminate may charge a group of consumers with relatively elastic demands a lower price than they charge other groups with relatively inelastic demands. A firm engages in group price discrimination by dividing potential customers into two or more groups 
and setting different prices for each group. Consumer groups may differ by age, such as adults and children, by location, such as by country, or in other ways. As with perfect price discrimination, to engage in group price discrimination, a firm must have market power, be able to identify groups with different reservation prices, and prevent resale. Suppose there are two types of consumers with different demand curves. The monopoly firm chooses quantities to maximize its profit. It could be proved that the marginal revenue from the first group is equal to the marginal revenue from the second group, and both of them are equal to the marginal cost. Suppose the consumers in the United States lot market are more price elastic than the consumers in the UK market, and the monopoly has a constant marginal cost. Then it will charge a higher price and sell fewer products in the UK than in the United States. The price the monopoly can charge is negatively related to the elasticity of the demand curves the monopoly faces. Firms use two approaches to divide customers into groups. One method is to divide consumers into groups based on observable characteristics of consumers that the firm believes are associated with relatively high or relatively low price elasticities. For example, movie theaters price discriminate using the age of customers. Another approach is to identify and divide customers based on their actions. The firm allows consumers to self-select the group to which they belong. For example, a firm may identify customers by their willingness to spend time to buy a good at a lower price. Many firms use discount coupons. Those price-sensitive customers are willing to spend time in collecting coupons and pay a relatively low price. Airlines give customers a choice between high price and low price tickets because they know that the vacation travelers usually plan their trip in advance and have relatively high elasticities of demand. While the business travelers have a relatively inelastic demand curve. Firms could use nonlinear price discrimination by letting the price that each customer pays vary with the number of units purchased. Firms could use two-part pricing. With two-part pricing, the firm charges each consumer a lump sum access fee for the right to buy as many units of the good as the consumer wants at a per unit price. The overall payment consists of two prices, an access fee and a per unit price. Two-part pricing is commonly used. Many warehouse stores require that customers buy an annual membership to be able to buy goods at relatively low prices. If all the consumers are identical, the firm can maximize its profit by setting its price equal to its marginal cost and charging an access fee that captures the entire potential consumer surplus. If the consumers have different price elasticities, and if the firm knows each consumer's demand curve can prevent 
to sell and can charge its customers different prices and access fees. It can capture the entire potential consumer surplus. Now suppose that the monopoly has to charge each customer the same lump sum fee and the same per unit price. Then it could maximize its profit by setting a lower lump sum fee and charging a price that is above the marginal cost. Another form of ununiform pricing is a tie-in sale in which customers can buy one product or service only if they agree to purchase another as well. Firms could advertise to maximize its net profit. A successful advertising shifts the demand curve by changing customers' tastes or informing customers about new products. The monopoly may be able to change the tastes of some customers by telling them that a famous person uses the product. By doing so, the consumer's demand curve shifts to the right or become less elastic. The rule for setting the profit maximizing amount of advertising is the same as that for setting the profit maximizing amount of output. Set advertising or quantity where the marginal benefit equals its marginal cost.